Despite being virtual, we sure do a lot of work digitizing reality into VR now, don't we? Ah yes, there's still quite a bit of human grunt work at hand in the creation of realistic and reality-inspired assets for virtual worlds. But with reality scanning technology, a whole lot of the work is being taken off of our shoulders. Hello Virtual Dreamers, Gregory here. As anyone who's made a 3D model can tell you, there's a whole lot of work involved in turning triangles into recognizable shapes. Whether it's lining things up with references, tracing, going by eye, or trying to think up an original procedural algorithm, we've been trying to capture reality in other forms for all of human history. VR 3D just being the most recent iteration of this practice. Good old fashioned tracing by eye can yield some pretty good results with talent or practice of course, and leaving room for artistic vision isn't going out of style anytime soon. But it's hard to deny that doing the work yourself when all you want is a copy of the original item you already have seems like a lot of unnecessary work. Thankfully. It's the 21st century and we're automating all of the things. Between the advanced sensors, AI data analysis, and sophisticated procedural algorithms, bringing real life to our virtual neck of the woods is getting easier all the time. Let's dig into some of the heroic technological goodies and appreciate what we've got now, shall we? At the start of all this increasing accessibility is the improved sensor technologies we have available to us. Sensors are what we use to convert things from the real world to digital information. Stuff like cameras, gyroscopes, step sensors, and radar are both more effective and more readily available for just about anyone to use. Smartphones like the Google Pixel 4 and iPhone even feature multiple of these sensors or all of them, for example. So it's not really out that difficult for everyone to have these kind of technologies available. It's also not particularly hard to get these kinds of sensors individually as components for use with electronics like the Raspberry Pi or Arduino either. And as for the more high-end versions of these components, they can be accessible in products that don't demand military-grade budgets to obtain now either. Well, suffice it to say, we've got ourselves a whole lot of tools available to get information on real world objects. Question then is, how do we use it? Why, by giving it to our sassy AI overlords, of course. Methodologies like machine learning have enabled our data to be processed in ways unimaginable just a few years ago. Through photogrammetry, software can now process photos to generate 3D reconstructions of real world scenes and objects. Thanks to the kind of information being gathered, they can even manage to capture the smaller, more complex details that humans either can't recreate or don't care to. AI models driven by huge databases of information can even allow for image recognition that can begin to match or even exceed humans in some areas, such as trying to beat Wells Waldo. Which, of course, brings us to the last big area I want to touch on. Procedural generation has been a thing for a long time now in 3D graphics, but the value of today's tools of AI and real-world references working in conjunction for this technique can't be understated. If scanning and virtualizing reality is the goal, the sheer scope of the task at hand has to be taken into consideration. Having people sit down to model every variety of rock formation, vegetation, fauna, and even our own generated physical constructs is a monumental task. Yeah, ain't nobody got the time for that kind of thing. Allowing computers to use the libraries of data they obtain from their regular uses, such as corporate privacy invasion, and their own algorithmic models to analyze and integrate them to recreate reality is basically the new school version of artistic license. Hand modeling every building in New York City or Tokyo is a monumental reconstruction task. So why bother? The best option for this reality scan is to allow our tech to handle the majority of the task. Using satellite images to get the layout, photo references to recreate the building components, and use a procedural system to get a good mix of reality-based recreations with logical reconstructions to get a functionally identical version of the city for use. Google has had an early version of this concept in use for years now with Google Earth, 
and Microsoft is seemingly taking this to a whole new level for their newest version of Microsoft Flight Simulator, using actual weather information, streamed in satellite imagery, high quality models, and a procedural engine to get a gorgeous version of our world into the application. Just think how much time and effort it would take to build the entire Earth out by hand at the level of quality we have available otherwise. Seriously, give it a try, it's really mind-boggling. It's snap winds everywhere here, with the only reasons I can think of that people would have to complain being that things aren't perfect yet. Gathering information using sensors isn't an automated process in that of itself yet, so we still need to ask mom or our friends to take pictures if we don't have our own personal scanning room setups. It's also worth remembering that the AI models that make all this stuff possible are works in progress as in that of themselves, and as much as one would like to twist neural networks and machine learning into completely self-improving structures, GLaDOS and Skynet have yet to take over just yet, so we clearly have a lot of work to do. Likewise, the AI not being perfect also means the results aren't going to be perfect either, and a lot of the reality scan assets we create still need humans to go in after the fact to tweak things in order to look right. Easier doesn't mean completely effortless, and we've clearly got a long way to go with our scannings of reality. But hey, good news here is that just about every last one of those imperfections I mentioned before are valuable areas of study and development in that of themselves, and even in their current states, they are almost always going to yield better results than we'd have by doing things ourselves from scratch. Gathering information with modern sensor tech isn't always going to be easy or cheap, but it's accessible enough that most people can get into it if they have something like a smartphone. So yeah, 3D scanographers bringing nice rocks, grass, and humans to a location near you. I should probably visit one sometime soon. Mom shouldn't have to put up with the kind of nonsense I'm making mine go through at this age. Clearly the development effort to improve photogrammetry algorithms and object identification software is proving fruitful, so you bet I'll gladly keep a psychopathic AI as a roommate if it appeases the AI gods enough to bless us with better 3D scans and pictures in darkness. Also, please like and subscribe. May thy shameless plug please you, oh benevolent YouTube algorithm summer. To get to the heart of things here finally, it's also important to remember with all of this, the reasons why we're even trying to scan real life elements in the first place. To use them. We could perfectly scan reality into our computers for all we care, but it'd all be meaningless if we didn't consider the artistic, practical, and emotional purposes of the endeavor. We'll almost inevitably end up tweaking the end results to fit the needs of our activities, so it shouldn't be too huge of a leap to go ahead and adjust the assets to better fit as a consequence. Those Quixel rocks aren't just going to end up eating hard drive space, they're gonna make our forests look nice. The pictures of family and 3D models of mementos are going to occupy walls and shelves. Sure, I'd like to not have to cut out the background from my models whenever I'm working with them, but I'd rather do that than build the whole model from scratch, and I'll be continually grateful to the tools and people who make the tools for enabling creativity as much as they have. Seeing as the majority of the worlds I see born of our imaginations have some basis or inspiration from the elements of the real world, I posit that we need to continue to facilitate and engage with reality scanning technologies like object sensors, data analysis, and procedural algorithms so our virtual needs can be met. We've got a long way to go before 3D scanning is as easy as taking a picture or recording some words. But when I consider how much better my VR rig parts are going to be thanks to having a more accurate topology of my body, it puts a smile on my face. Doing it yourself has its place, but it doesn't hurt to lighten our loads using technology if it helps us to get to our end goals faster. Thank you very much, my dear viewers, for watching this video. Be sure to rate, comment, share, and subscribe to let YouTube Algorithm Summon know to make our paths cross again. Till next time, my fellow adventurers and dreamers, this has been Gregory, logging out.